Hello, my name is Matthew Rice from Chemtrack and what we're going to do today is show you how to measure a few um, things with the Chemtrack MBP007 backscatter photometer and um, the samples we're going to look at uh, some Nivea products that we took from the local supermarket. One is this um, Nivea cream which is a thick white um, paste and then a few other products we have the um, moisturizing milk and a cleansing milk and um, this is the product behind you it's a backscatter photometer with fiber optics taking the light to a backscatter probe and the probe um, is a pH style electrode so we could probably take that out and give you a little look it's, it's the same size and shape as a standard 12 millimeter diameter pH probe and it fits in any sort of receptacle design for a pH probe. We do have other designs, for example, in clamp design, tri-clamps. Um, but this is the one we'll be using today. On the instrument display here, you'll see it on the top left corner of the screen. So what you see here is what you see there. The top line of the display, let me see if I can do that again. Yeah, there you go. The top line is the light scattered at 850 nanometers, and the bottom line is the light scattered at 470 nanometers. Now, we can give more information about this in a technical document, but particles are between about 0.1 and, and um, around that size, microns um, and one micron, have different scattering of light depending upon the wavelength of light. So what we can do with this machine is use it for looking at changes in concentration, measuring concentration. We can also look at changes in the particle size distribution because when you measure scattered light it's a function of the concentration, the particle shape and size, also the refractive index and any color of the sample. But in these cases, refractive index and color isn't going to be an issue. But you might be looking at the stability of an emulsion, in which case you're looking at small changes in the particle size for the same concentration. And you'll see that as a shift in the ratio between the two different wavelengths. So let's start with the Nivea cream. We'll prepare our samples. We like to work with the old-fashioned film canisters. We found a use for those. And in here, you can see we have our Nivea cream. What we do is we just simply take a spatula and fill that up, like so. So that's ready to be measured. That one there. And the other two samples, we can just take a film canister and fill it up. There we go, that's that one. That's, that's quite a bit more runny. It might be a bit hard to see on the video, but there's definitely differences in the, in the um, consistency of those different samples. So you can see those samples there. And then of course this one, which is the, the paste, thick, thick, thick paste. So um, let's make it easy. Let's start with one of the, um, this one looks like possibly the um, less viscous of all three samples. Pop a little lid on there, we don't make a mess. And they've got a hole in there. We just simply place it in the probe like that. And then you can see the instruments reading. We get um, 20, we're at 21,000. I'll just write those numbers down, 21,000. on 850 nanometers and for the 470 we get 11587 and that's the cleansing milk so I'll write those down that's the measurement simple as that and of course this instrument is designed for use in the lab or um, primarily designed for process use where it can be put in the pipeline and measures continuously just wipe that off with a Kleenex. Let me take our second sample. This is the moisturizing milk. Again, shove it in. Now the moisturizing milk we get 
much higher readings, much, much higher readings. You can see that's a denser sample. Um, 50,000, almost 51,000 compared to 21,000 on the cleansing milk. And also you can see double. So roughly um, double on both of those samples, um, which, would, which would be indicative of the mostly the concentration of the samples. I mean, in the, in the, in the cleansing milk, you can see there's obviously a lot more water in that because it's a much thinner um, sample. And it could have somewhat to do with the particle size, but I would say mostly the um, concentration. So there we go, no problem with those samples. Let's give the probe a clean. Take a little bit more. And finally, we've got this um, Nivea cream. Pop that one in here, and this is quite thick, and you can see it's quite hard to push the probe into that. Surprisingly, surprise, surprise, we get approximately the same value of the um, Nivea cream, which is around 50,000, as we do on the moisturizing milk, where we got about 51,000, and then um, 23,560. Which is actually quite interesting. Um, similar values of that, but the um, cleansing milk, very, very different values. Well, this was just a very, very quick demonstration just to show you how easy it is to set the product up and use it. Um, just shove the probe in, the readings come instantly on the screen, and it can be used for samples as optically dense as hand cream. Um, and it can measure also down to about one NTU. Um, we wouldn't recommend using it below 100 NTUs, but that is essentially clear water. Um, the, but the product comes into its own when measuring extremely optically dense samples, such as creams and ointments and so forth, um, emulsions. So there we go, the MBP 007 with the PG 30.5 pH style backscatter probe.